The judge ruled the law was legal, but that's because they were dealing mainly with, um, with um, uh, the state's rights versus federal rights, you know, who has the right to make pollution controls and cafe standards and so on. So the climate wasn't the driving force, but the climate was the intent of the bill. But yet the judge still said, plaintiff's expert Dr. Christie estimated that implementing the regulations across the entire United States would reduce global temperature by about a hundredth of a degree, by 2100. Hansen and Jim Hansen testified on behalf of the other side. Hansen did not contradict that testimony. What I said, both sides agreed, the judge agreed, the bill has no impact at all on the climate. Now, we'll raise your car price about $4,000 a car, but it has no impact on the climate. I ask a question also in this trial, what could make a dent? Is there anything that we could do? So let's build a thousand nuclear power plants. John McCain campaigned on the issue of building 45. So this is a thousand. It's not going to happen, okay? But we can do the experiment to see what it would mean. And these are big ones, 1.4 gigawatts each. Let's do the experiment again. A thousand nuclear power plants by 2020, and this is what it is. It's a dent. I had to build a thousand just to get a dent of seven hundredths of a degree. Now we might want to go to nuclear power for many other reasons, but to control the climate, uh, uh, we can't. We can't control the climate. Was that two or three, John? Three, <laughs> okay. Um, so the main points are without energy, life is brutal and short. Proposed do something about global warming initiatives will not detectably alter whatever the climate is going to do. So tell me what your initiative, issue, your initiative is and I will test it. I will, I will figure out what it can do. Making energy more expensive is a regressive tax and stops economic development. Uh, clearest example, Alabama is growing and manufacturing because of our inexpensive energy. Uh, a plant manager, owner, actually said to me, he said, John, if our price for electricity goes up anymore, um, we're moving. He said, Alabama is our last stop in this country. We're taking our whole manufacturing enterprise to Mexico. Of course, the ironic thing about that is a law that's designed to clean the air just makes it dirtier because the plant they build in Mexico is going to be much more polluting than they would uh, actually hold here. But for Alabama, it means we lose all those jobs and people lose their health care, their education opportunities, and so on. So making energy more expensive is not the way to go if you uh, want to see uh, things improve in terms of economic development. This was a 500-page bill that came out last year. i just say about it, the greatest climate change threat to the U.S. is not the variations of its physical climate uh, that really hasn't changed in 100 years, uh, but the impact on its economy from climate change regulations. I want to paraphrase my physics teacher from way back in high school. We should always begin our scientific assessments with this statement. At our present level of ignorance, we think we know. I want to get this point across to you. Our ignorance about the climate system is enormous. And you and our policymakers need to know that. This is an extremely complex system. And to understand it and think we can predict it is uh, a little bit of hubris in my mind. And so when those people who say, I am confident I know how the world works, I am confident I know that CO2 does this to the climate or so on, they don't know how complicated the system is. And to them, I say just a very simple thing. If you know so much about the climate system, then why can't you predict it? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we now have a 10-minute response from uh, Dr. Schlesinger. This may be as much fun as uh, Obama and McCain. Uh, so, John, uh, you know, uh, I got to disagree with you on a lot of subjects. Um, I'd say when a climate bill or a proposal to do nothing about this issue is criticized that it will have no effect, that it will be a trivial effect. Uh, that's because we're being unrealistic about the magnitude of the problem and what ought to, in fact, be done. We have not taken uh, the seriousness of this issue, the, the difficulty uh, that this is going to present us uh, at all serious, uh, seriously, and we need to do so uh, before we get a level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that is irretrievable. Uh, in terms of its impact on the climate. And the second thing I'd like to point out is that while you spend a fair amount of time criticizing climate models, in fact, a huge amount of time criticizing climate models, 
It's a climate model itself uh, that allowed you to make those uh, statements uh, that you believe that uh, only a small amount of impact will be seen on the temperature if we take action A or action B. Um, so essentially, you're using a number of the techniques uh, that you find are uh, wrought with a level of ignorance uh, and, uh, and, and uh, lack of, of confidence in them. Nevertheless, I think it's important that you acknowledge that in fact the planet is warming and your data show that uh, widely, uh, that there is a CO2 effect on the planet's warming. Uh, I would differ with you in the sense that uh, the quote of Michael Crichton, Michael Crichton is a fiction writer, uh, for him to say anything about science or scientific consensus uh, I think is totally inappropriate. It would be as inappropriate as my saying that I was going to go off and write a best-selling work of fiction, which is truly fictional. Um, the IPCC is probably the largest effort for scientists around the world, 2,500 of them, to get together and argue out the state of our knowledge on how the world's climate system works and what the impact of carbon dioxide would be on that climate. You were part of that. The, I'd say there's been more consensus in that group than the consensus 40 years ago that cigarettes cause lung cancer. And yet we took action on cigarettes ca causing lung cancer, uh, starting off with, with warnings and labels and increasing of taxes and the like. Um, and I think we're all very glad that we did so. The waiting for yet another climate model to get the 10th the degree agreement with this is like a cancer patient that has had nine opinions in one direction and says, oh, I must get a 10th opinion uh, before I consider some kind of treatment there. That's inappropriate in the face of the kinds of threats that this planet faces uh, from climate change and rising CO2. I want to spend a little bit of time on rising CO2 uh, simply by itself. A number of people for a number of years have said that carbon dioxide, CO2, rising in Earth's atmosphere is the best thing uh, since sliced bread. It's a raw material for photosynthesis at what makes makes plants grow. There's no doubt that carbon dioxide is what makes plants grow. They take carbon dioxide out of the air and they convert it into the carbon of their tissues. But there's a limit to what carbon dioxide does uh, in terms of stimulating plant growth. And at the rate we are adding it to the atmosphere, it is likely that we will achieve levels on the order of 700 parts per million late in this century that have been shown to be clearly deleterious to plant growth, particularly of crop plants. They have so much photosynthate in their cells that the chloroplasts actually explode from the accumulation of starch grains within them. Uh, that will be a huge detriment to global yield. And notice at that time, when we've achieved those levels, there'll be very little we can do about lowering the carbon dioxide concentration uh, in the atmosphere. So it's fine to say that carbon dioxide may, uh, may have, in the past, uh, cause plants to grow a little faster, and it may today, or next spring, cause them to grow yet a little bit more faster. But there is a limit to that, and we approach that limit and beyond it at our peril of food supply. I was in charge of the experiment in Duke Forest that ran for 10 years where we exposed a large area of forest, nearly the size of this room, in replicate plots to high carbon dioxide. We essentially added carbon dioxide uh, to those plots of forest to simulate the concentration globally in the year 2050. The trees grew a little bit faster, about 10 or 12 percent faster. Extrapolated globally, that would take up about 10 percent of the emissions that the world will have in the year 2050. So it makes a small but relatively trivial, trivial uh, impact on the climate change and carbon dioxide problem. Meanwhile, we saw a number of disturbing uh, features of that forest growth. The production of pollen by the pines roughly tripled. This has now been seen in a wide variety of weeds uh, in lab experimental results that have shown a huge increase in pollen production. And so for all of you that suffer from hay fever, or more seriously, emphysema or asthma, rising CO2 is probably the worst thing you can hear about in terms of respiratory disease. 